Welcome back to the workshops of JL Smith. I'm Jeff Smith and in this second of two videos we're going to be describing how to replace a flute head joint cork. Let's go to the bench and take a look. You may remember this head joint from the prior video. This is the one that is so loose. The cork is so loose at the top it'll be very easy to get this out. Yes, yeah, so I could push it out with a finger. That's not very typical. They usually have a little more resistance than that, even if they're leaking. We could use this one as an example. See, this one, I can't press that, that cork down at all. So we use a, a part of the tool set we call the, the head joint cork hammer out of the flute head cork set, like so. And it knocks it out very simply without doing any damage to any of the parts. To reinstall, we use the other part of our cork tool set, like so. Let's take a further look at this head joint cork. This is the one that was leaking so badly. You can see it has water stains coming all the way up here, so the water from the musician is getting all the way past the, the seal area of the cork. This is the area that should be sealing perfectly right in here. But you can see it's actually even separated from the cork plate, so it's probably not glued there. And this washer is very loose on here. That washer would actually cause a sympathetic vibration when the musician is playing. It could be very annoying and very puzzling sometimes. We'll certainly want to deal with that. This one has a pretty small washer used as a cork plate and that's unusual. Let's see if we can get this off of here. This one seems to be fairly secure. Oftentimes I'll try to push them off against a block and if they don't come free then I'll use a pair of pliers to break it free like so, just pressing on it. So this one I was able to break free from the cork plate and pull it loose. This may have had some glue on it, but not much. We'll just clean up any residue and get it ready for the next cork. Just using a machinist scraper for this task. I try to use the original part, so even this washer, though I'm not fond of it, I'll clean it up and we'll use it again. Try to keep the integrity of the original design. I'll enlarge the hole just a little bit using the uh, threaded area of the shaft as kind of a rasp, if you will. I loosen it up because I want to be able to center the plate on the cork. So I'll be looking to see that I have the same exposure of the cork around the edge of the cork plate because I want to be able to center this nicely. Just a little more work here. Ah, oh, that'll work. The next step is to apply a little liquid shellac on the cork. All the way around the cork. And we'll get a little squeeze out when I press this plate on. Just like so. I want to make sure that cork plate is 
very secure and I'll center it nicely and wipe off any excess. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Putting that washer back in place and then securing the nut. Now whenever you have a nut like this as opposed to the the other style cork plate which has an integral nut I'll take and use a little bit of shellac on the threads themselves to help hold that nut in place and just secure that with a pair of pliers. When you put that pressure on the plate, you'll see that the cork sometimes expands a little bit in diameter. And that's okay because the next step is we're going to shape this to fit the head joint. The next step in installing the head cork is to fit it. It's normally going to be oversized and it's going to be too thick to fit up into this area it'll more likely wedge itself somewhere in this range. Where I want to see it come without any pressure or without much pressure is right into this area. So the north side of the core touches the north side area of the embouchure hole. Let's see how it fits right now. I'll just drop it in. Just use a slight bit of pressure just to locate it. And I see that the cork is actually on this lower side here of the embouchure hole. You can't even see the cork coming up into the window. So let's take it back out. And we'll fit it by spinning it on our bench lathe. Now, I, I make these more or less cylindrical, but there are some people that will um, either taper them or make them a barrel shape. I'll leave that up to your judgment. It's a good idea to wear eye protection and um, a dust mask when you're working with this device. Um, I have safety glasses on, but um, uh, for the purposes of the video, I'm not using a dust mask. Spinning it on the bench motor. I really don't need to take much off at all. I'll take a little bit out. This is done with a 220 grit shop roll. Just blow off the excess. See how it fits up there. It certainly has gone up just a little bit further. And you can see it appearing in the window. I'm going to take just a little more off of it. Back into the bench lathe for just another spin or two. That's probably all we need. Yes, so I could see it's up to the north side of the window now. Removing it one last time. I'm going to put a little cork grease around just to help preserve it and help to lubricate it so we could slide it into its own position. There should be a fair amount of pressure to put it in position, but I'm not having to use like two hands on the, on the head joint and really reefing on it. So I've got it in the home position now, and I guarantee you it's going to be in there for many years to come. For my last steps, I'll just put the crown back in place. Make sure that's nice and secure. And I'll swab out the head joint just to remove any residue of the cork grease. I'll also clean the embouchure hole with a Q-tip swab, and we're done. For an extra professional touch, I like to polish the cork plate so it looks really beautiful once inside the instrument. I do that with a little micro mesh and spinning it on the bench lathe.
And that's usually all it takes. I hope you've enjoyed learning my method for replacing the flute head joint cork. For information on the head joint cork tool set, please see jlsmithco.com. Until next time, this is Jeff Smith saying thanks for watching and I'll see you back here soon.